it's the lack of control that's getting us into trouble. And that's that question is, I mean, like, is it just the toxin load? I mean, like over the last 120 years, and obviously the change in the diets and, and, and now the introduction of the chemicals, whatever it is, it's produced quite a change that we are now seeing such yeah. inflammatory disease in young people. So it's really about pacing. You know, inflammation is heat, right? See, and yes. heat is kinetic energy. And kinetic energy is created by friction. If anybody listening, you take your hand and you rub them, you'll produce heat, which degrades, you know, degrades whatever cells are being degraded by the friction. So we are now in a play in a, in a time of inflammation where the space between activities is getting shorter, the space between our reactivity is getting shorter, right? In the past, even it's insane. 40 years ago, we would send a letter when I my my father was a civil engineer and he worked in South Korea. And I would write letter in 10th grade to my friends in Israel and they would mail the letters. I would know what's happening. Every two weeks I would get a letter and I would read it. Then came the phone and the cell phone. Now, if you don't answer a text in two minutes, what's <laughs> going on? You forgot about me, you know? So our span shortens. Also our span, the space be between our thoughts shortens and we create a very condensed area. So there are two, and this is so important for mycotoxin people. This is like, I'm gonna give now a jewel, okay? I will define this as a jewel, okay? So in the level of the mind, we wanna create space between the thought to reduce our reactivity. That's a hard job to do because our tendency is to hold, to grasp, to identify, to survive. But if we move from our heart, from our brain, from our thinking to our heart, our heart has no concepts. The heart flows all the time. It never, it never stops to think. The moment it contracts, we're dead. We get hyperviscosity, elevated lipoprotein A, no oxygen. So when we move into our heart, we are increasing the spaciousness. And from the point of view of mycotoxins, one of the key things to really consider is that our relationship to our symptoms. Okay, so it's very important because that's where muscle activation falls in. So if we look at the survival response, one of the characteristics of survival is that some people are alarmists. They always see the, the trouble going, oy vey, right? It, it's a Jewish mantra, right? Yeah. Also in the Holocaust, we forgot what we see, it, you know, it was the optimism, the other part. But so we overreact. So you have a headache and you know, oh, when I get this headache, usually I'll feel tired. And then I'll get this kind of symptom and this kind, and we go down the habitual chain of symptoms. But if we could just let go of the headache and not identify it with other things, not hold to it, not struggle with it, we are reducing the survival response. The fungus in our body is getting a message that there's less danger, you can relax. You don't need to protect yourself because mycotoxins are excreted to protect the fungus. That's why they're excreted at any cost. And the irony and the sad part with infections, with cancer, eventually if you kill the host, whoever is visiting the host is also gonna die. You know, it's not good for anybody. Harmony <laughs> always works better. So this is a whole approach that is happening to us right now. And this is why, while I'm a researcher, I spend a lot of time in teaching meditation and healing and the group of patients that responds best are the patients with chronic fatigue, with mycotoxins, with uh, this chronic inflammation where it's very dramatic. And the reason is it's easier for our body to communicate in these areas. It's much harder to communicate with a cancer cell, which is completely independent. It's dysregulated. It doesn't want to listen. So. Right. Using the mind to affect cancer is very challenging. Using the minds to affect inflammation is not as challenging. And once we create space, what happens? Oxygen comes in. And then once oxygen comes in and we are relaxed enough, suddenly our insulin receptors work better, AMPK gets activated, we produce more ATP, there's less hypoxia-inducing factor, mitochondria is starting to celebrate, Glyphosate is not stealing our nutrient and you get all the B vitamins and, and PDH is working well, pyruvate dehydrogenase. Yeah. Everybody's happy and we can produce energy 
in a relaxed, efficient manner. I mean, it's amazing how glycolysis produces 100 times faster energy, but it's a terrible inefficiency of 280 people glucose and tons of lactic acid and hypoxia. So these are the vicious cycles. So, you know, because I know, I know how you work and how you think and we think separate, similarly, we have to address an acute issue. We can't say, let's talk about what happened to your grandfather yeah. three generations ago, right? But at the same time, we got to address the bigger picture. And that's the true, that's the true journey of healing. So it's a combination of seeing the really big picture, which is beyond concepts, where you don't even set up an idea what your patient has be, you just let it express itself. But into it, Eric, you know, you, you look at your, at, at your history as a doctor, yeah. decades of experience. So you see it, you listen, and suddenly the insights come up, right? Now that's that's, but, un- that's how we work. Yeah. But if you limit yourself to a preconceived idea, like an algorithm for, for the regular doctors that I really, uh, I feel bad for, you know, there are bright people who just took a different path, then you really don't have choices. Anything out of your scope creates survival yeah. response, creates fear, creates skepticism. Because yeah. what would happen if everything you believed in was found to be not true? For you and for me, we move on. It happens all right. the time. Exactly. I, I mean, I, fun of it. Yeah. you know, I always say if I knew, you know, I won't wish I, uh, yes, it, it, the smallness of thought is just what happens when you when you start with um, with algorithms with cookbooks. You right. know, and again, you need them when it's life and death in the moment. That's you know, right. one of the reasons I don't think I was I was not as great of an ER doctor as I had wanted to be when I first started got out of medical school was because I would say, oh, it could be this, but could be six other things too. Maybe we should, you know, and you know, when you when you're in the ICU or in the emergency room, you need to make a decision quick. You know, but yeah, it could be, but with the could be is what allows life and what allows the expression of the other person. Because you know, I say chronic disease is about the is an individual is the individual expression of the other being. You know, Completely. so it's and, the, when you when you don't restrict you uh, you give the person more options. You know, often I always tell cancer patients you always have options at your deathbed. You have options. How you're gonna die, how it's gonna affect the environment. And you, we always have options. We always have options. And options create space. Space creates letting go. And when we let go, everybody's happier. 